Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's Fuji Friday, I definitely want to catch up on some topics that I've been meaning to talk about, but we had so much XT4 news. I figured it was important to cover all of that before we moved on. But now that the XT4 is pretty much out in the wild with a bunch of reviews, I can get back to some of the topics that I've been wanting to talk about. But very quickly, I just have some housekeeping notes. There are some firmware updates for some rather old cameras, so it's worth talking about them real quick. So I'll just put it up here. But the XF10, the XA5, the XP140, and the XT100, like I said, some of the older camera bodies out there. And this is a minor firmware update to improve Wi-Fi connectivity to the mobile Fuji app, which I've gone on record saying that it isn't a very good app. And to be completely honest with you, there's not a day that goes by that I don't see a comment or an email about needing help with the Fuji app. And there's really nothing that I can do for these people because I don't really know why the Fuji app isn't working for them. So when I say that the Fuji app isn't very good and the reason why I harp on it is because I constantly see messages from other people having issues with that. So trust me when I say the Fuji app isn't very good, it's from a very large demographic telling me that it isn't very good. And this is the reason why I harp on it and why Fujifilm should really consider really improving that app, just rewriting it completely. But if you do own one of those camera bodies, definitely check out the firmware update as it can help you if you want to use the Fuji camera app. Now, the next topic that I want to talk about, and this was a conversation that was started on last week's Fuji Friday. Friday, a lot of you pointed out that there is the GFX 50R and the GFX 50S. And I do agree that those are entry level cameras within the medium format market for Fujifilm. But the thing is, if you've ever tried the GFX 100 and then you actually go down and try the GFX 50s, either the R or the S, you're really disappointed. And this is the problem that I have with having those within the same camera line. So just to reference the X-T3 and the X-T30, when you use the X-T3, you see all of the capabilities and then you move down to the X-T30, the jump isn't really all that far. In fact, most of the capabilities are still within the X-T30 and you can see the trade-off between size, weight, and also the capabilities of that camera. Now, when you go to the GFX 100 and you move down to the GFX 50, the gap is so huge that you're really disappointed in the GFX 50 cameras if you were to go in that direction. Now, if you started off in the GFX 50 and move up to the GFX 100, it is an amazing experience because it's just a completely different camera. You can see why it's so revolutionary when you're jumping from the GFX 50 to the GFX 100. The problem is, is when you go the other way, you're highly disappointed. And when you have that type of problem, it's better off splitting the two camera lines. Now, during last week's videos, I did propose moving the XH line into the introductory of the medium format line. And that was just meant to be a fun and interesting discussion. And I have to say that a lot of you left a really long comments for me to read. And I do read all of them. And I really do appreciate all of you leaving those comments because I really do enjoy reading them. It does take me a while to read through all of them, but I try to reply to all of them. And a lot of times, a lot of you bring up really interesting points and very valid reasons on why you think that way. And I tend to agree with most everybody in there. It's just that every once in a while, I do like to bring up discussion points that might be a little bit on the far left or on the far right. And this is just to really bring up discussion. So definitely keep writing those comments. But getting back on topic here, I really would like to see the next generation of entry level medium format cameras from Fuji Films. And the reason why I say that is because I don't really believe the current cameras, the GFX 50R and the GFX 50S, they're really not capable enough when you actually compare it with the GFX 100 because that is a very well-rounded camera. So I really would like to see those Gen 1 cameras obsoleted and then bring in a new line of Gen 3 entry level cameras. And the chances of it being a GH line is definitely near zero. I understand that, but I would like to see a new line of GFX cameras come out so that we can kind of differentiate between really high end and kind of entry level. But a entry level medium format camera that can do really good 4K video, I'm definitely interested in that. And I hope that actually comes out sometimes with 
within the next two years. Now, out of the comments from last week, another interesting point, and it's a thread throughout a lot of comments, is a lot of people want to see a full frame Fuji Films camera. And that's something that Fuji Films has been adamantly against because they think the full frame market is already too crowded and they don't have a range of lenses for full frame, which when we thought about it and when I actually discussed it with a couple of people, that's not necessarily true because they are flushing out the GFX line of camera lenses, which are medium format lenses, they technically can go down to full frame because there's nothing really to prevent that. It's just that you're carrying around a lot of additional glass if you were to use it on a full frame camera, but it is technically possible. So if Fuji Films did come out with a full frame censored camera body, they can use the GFX line of camera lenses to be able to support that type of camera systems, which honestly, that's kind of what the Nikon Z cameras are doing, which means you can buy full frame Z mount glass put it on a crop sensor Z mount body, but again, you're carrying around a lot of glass and a lot of money for no reason. So getting back on topic, if they were to make a full frame camera body, they technically do have a line of camera lenses that would work for a full frame sensor. It's just, I don't think it'll ever happen. The last topic that I do want to talk about is the lens roadmap for 2020. We know there's going to be a total of four new lenses that are supposed to be coming out this year. One of the ones that we do know about is the 50 millimeter F1.0. Now this is a very interesting topic because that lens started out in life as a 33 millimeter F1.0, which made a lot of sense because within the 35 to 33 millimeter range, there's actually a lot of lenses, but they all have like different varying degrees of uses. So this right here is the 35 millimeter F1.4. Now within the Fuji lineup, I would consider this to be more of a vintage lens because of the style and the look that it gives off. And the other lens, which is the 35 millimeter F2, that is a more modern lens with a MTF chart that can kind of back that up. Now what would have been interesting and and I think the reason why it started off in life as a 33 millimeter f1.0 was that this was supposed to be the modern rendition of a really fast 50 millimeter prime lens in the Fujifilm lineup. But because of size and cost constraints, they moved it up to a 50 millimeter f1.0. But the problem there is that there is already a 56 millimeter f1.2 that is very capable and it's very modern. And I think a lot of people really like that lens. So a lot of people that I've been talking to looking at this f1.0, they're kind of wondering why it even exists because they don't really see that big of a benefit. I'm sure it's going to sell well within the professional market for, for a lot of enthusiasts like this, we really don't see the value in this because it's probably going to be an extremely expensive lens, but you're really not looking at something that's going to be all that much faster than what we already have in the 56 millimeter f1.2. It'll be really interesting to see if there's actually a place for this type of lens out there because I don't think there's going to be a lot of people running out spending two, three thousand dollars on this new lens when there's already a competitive option out there and it's already very fast. But I could be wrong on that. It'll be very interesting to see. But I figured I'd want to share my thoughts on that because that's probably going to be the first lens that's going to be coming out in 2020 for the Fujifilm systems. But those are the topics that I wanted to cover for this week because I've had it written down for a long time, just haven't had a chance to get into it. But hopefully you'll let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you in the next video.